Welcome to Community Hotline at Home. I'm Monica Weitzel, and I'll be your host for a conversation with the co-founder and co-director of the Vanport Mosaic, Laura Loforti. Welcome, Laura. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to have you here. You know, your nonprofit started out as a commemoration of the 19, was it 1948 Vanport Correct. flood? Uh, and it's an event that has its roots in Portland's um, very racist history. But as important as that is, your annual event has expanded beyond that. A lot of nonprofits have had to cancel their fundraisers and their annual events, but you're not canceling yours. You're just going at it from a different angle. Um, you want to tell us a little bit about, about what you've done, what your organization does, and how you're going to celebrate this this year. Sure. My pleasure, yes. Uh, so for the past five years, really, we um, we has grown into, um, we have grown into a memory activism platform. Uh, we started as a collective of people simply interested in exploring the uh, history of Vanport in, uh, um, in a more complex way. We felt that uh, there must be more to a story than uh, uh, the day of the flood, which is, of course is incredible tragedy, but often that is the narrative that, especially as journalists, we, we go after, right? the worst thing that ever happened to a community. So as a, as a community of uh, journalists, media makers, artists, historians, and Vampor families, um, we thought that uh, it was time to actually expand this narrative and really uh, create a, a space for a much larger and more complex and more probably authentic uh, um, representation of this experience. So. That was the, the seed of this idea. Mm -hmm. We did the first uh, festival in 2015 and thought that was it, but the response was uh, just so encouraging and, and warm. And, and also we became more and more curious about what else, because of course, um, a story like the Vampire story, uh, that is a story of a, an entire city that existed for five years and it became a multi-ethnic, multi-cultural community when the rest of Oregon was everything but, right. <laughs> or I would say even the rest of the country. Um, it, we felt this was just an incredible uh, uh, mirror of so many um, current issues. And without understanding that history, we felt we will never really grapple with the uh, um, with the reality of uh, Portland and Oregon. So that was the seed. Five years later, here we are with a festival that was planned to be once again for over two, week, <laughs> two weeks, um, honoring the, the anniversary of the flood, which, is, uh, uh, which, happened, which happened in the, uh, on Memorial Day in 1948, but always uh, using that as an entry point to the many other silence histories of our region, and always connecting the past to the present so that uh, we can understand who we are. And uh, our aspiration is to use these histories and this um, uh, collective inquiry to actually imagine what else we could be uh, if we only uh, learn from the past. And if we'd actually learn from the past, it would be wonderful, wouldn't it? Wouldn't be, <laughs> as, we, as we are in the midst of what this, uh, of this tragedy and, and truly where all the uh, inequalities um, and the undone business of justice uh, are right in front of our face. And, it's and, all coming up again, isn't it? Yeah. 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 So, and that is why uh, I personally felt that yeah, we cannot do the festival. Obviously, our our events are uh, truly uh, multi generational and intimate and uh, face to face and uh, community dialogue. So everything that you shouldn't do right now, you should do it because we need to be together. But obviously, for safety, that would be a very bad idea. But I felt that the stories still need to, we need those stories, we need those connections, we need, those, we need to elevate the experience of those who uh, 
uh, traditionally, historically, and currently experience uh, the injustice and the inequalities. Um, and so I thought, well, you know, it's not the same. I wouldn't say this is the Van for Mosaic Festival as you know it, mm -hmm. uh, because truly for us, uh, be in, in the space together and also be in uh, um, venues and uh, uh, places that are truly meaningful to the communities we want to honor, it is critical, but obviously we cannot do it. And so I would say it's a, it's a manifestation of the same aspirations. And so it will be a series of uh, events in collaboration with many, many partners, many individual artists, historians, um, cultural organizers, and activists um, as a way to uh, amplify the, the histories and the current stories that uh, truly need to inform how we will imagine what's next, what could be a normal that, that is actually uh, just and fair and where everybody can thrive and everybody can belong. So we're right. going to explore many histories of uh, exclusion, uh, but also as always we um, we don't we don't want to, uh, uh, you know, that's why we are a mosaic. There is a complexity in these stories. Mm -hmm. It's not a story of victims. It's a story of people who endure a lot and, and through that they uh, have incredible lessons of uh, hope and uh, resiliency and strength that never like today I think we need. We, we do, we do. The timing is actually good in that, I mean, it, you know, this will be a, um, it's a good way to tie the, the present with the past. So I, I really like that. Now, um, we don't have a lot of time, so I want to make sure we get the information on when this, when your event starts and ends and how people can find out more about it. Wonderful. So uh, the dates are fluctuating because more events are uh, are coming in, as always with this festival. It's a, it has a life on its own. Uh, and so uh, we are saying that we launch, we open on May 8th, and uh, we culminate uh, with, the, with the commemoration of the Vampire Flood on May 30th. Uh, please check our website www.tempomosaic.org or our social media, especially Facebook. We have a very active community where I will update it when dates uh, move. But you will be able to watch all these events um, on our website and on Facebook Live. And since we're here, if anyone has stories uh, about Vanport and personal memories, uh, this is an ongoing effort of memory activism effort in and collecting all the little pieces, the gems of this history. And so you can reach out at info, uh, um, <laughs> info vampromosaic.org. Okay, okay. Yes, there, there are still survivors around. So um, people that were kids or that were young at that time, because this is the 72nd anniversary, right? Exactly, yeah. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. And, many, and many of the survivors are part of this celebration. Usually we have a, a, a reunion for them, a private luncheon. Mm. We can do it, but, yeah. uh, but we are going to celebrate their, their strength. Good, good, and, and it should be celebrated. And I love what you're doing, Laura, and I wish we had more time to talk about it. So I hope in the future we can get together and actually do that. But in the meantime, uh, this gives people something they can do at home. They're stuck at home anyway. They might as well tune in, check out all the things. You may have more people involved than you ever did before because, you know, this is it's Absolutely. Yeah, it so can be I an opportunity. Yes. I appreciate it, Monica. Yes. Thank you so much, and thanks for being on the show today, and um, best of luck to you. Thank you. Bye. Yes. And thank you to our viewers uh, from all of us at Metro East Community Media. Be safe and be healthy. Bye.